on, it is on, it is on. We now have the top 10, and I'm gonna tell you what happened. Hey fam, what's up? This is Robert Anton, RobertAnton.com, coming to you with your no frills, American Idol commentary from a singer, and they had the top 10 revealed tonight. They moved to Los Angeles. Well, let me start reading. The top 20 becomes the top 10 tonight, and this top 10 have secured a place in the American Idol live tour. And they were on the LA stage tonight getting used to it so they can get, they get their thing going next week. 39 million views were cast yesterday, last night, and we got two different montages before the first started the results. <laughs> A full one for the whole thing, or like how they got there, their journey there, and then one just for the guys. So they started with the guys for results, and in no particular order, Ryan Seacrest called them, you know, went to the room where they were sitting in the back and told them who was going to be going through. They had to walk through this long hallway to the back of the stage, and then they were, they revealed them through the the, uh, the big panel, you know, the slides back on the stage. It was a whole convoluted process. And, Oh, Lord. And they had to sing a victory song, too. So, okay. The first person he called was Paul Jolly. And he he made it in, and he had to sing his victory song. And he did Alone by Heart. And I'm not going to do, like, I don't know. I just wrote little bitty things on here. Not full, like, critiques or anything and what the judges said and all that different stuff. But I was writing a few little things. And I, wrote, I really wonder why they decided to have them do a victory song. What purpose does it serve besides making the show longer? This was... <laughs> And I wrote, this wasn't very good, but Mariah stayed perky through it all. <laughs> and if you watched, if you watched, you know what I mean. Bernell Taylor was the next one that was called on, and he did Ready for Love by India RV. And he sang the heck out of this. I mean, this boy can sing. I really liked it. Mariah had tears in her eyes, and three of the judges stood for her, for him. But uh, Mariah couldn't seem to get up, so I don't know. I don't know what was going on with that. Curtis Fitch Jr. then got called in. Yay, Curtis! And I'm so glad that he has more voters than he does have haters at the moment. He did So High by John legend and he laid back and enjoyed himself on this performance. He didn't overwork it or anything like that and I wrote I wonder if his naysayers like this performance better than usual because everybody said oh he oversings he overdoes it blah 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 and he didn't really do overdo this one you know he just laid back and kind of did his thing. So there was something funny Ryan was sitting in the back room with the guys and he was about to do another reveal and I, I wrote laugh out loud because Ryan said who is it going to be and Charlie Askew said well you tell us. <laughs> I was cracking up. I was like, oh no, that was not, that was funny. I don't know if they practiced that or not, but that was very funny, Charlie. Charlie, it was so funny, Charlie. Ow, oh, Charlie bit me. <laughs> If you're enjoying the commentary so far, please make sure to thumb it up, thumb it up, and let me know that you're enjoying it. It also lets others on YouTube know that you are enjoying it. And maybe they'll want to come over and join the conversation and we have more people to talk with and more fun to be had by all. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Next up, we had Devin Velez, The Power of... Oh, he got called in next. He did The Power of One by Israel Hofton. Is it Hofton or Houghton? Y'all tell me. Keith stood for Devin as soon as he walked through the doors. He stood up. He was the only judge to stand. And I like that he took it a little up tempo, a very cool vibe, you know. Ryan called his mom up on stage to hug him. It was all very cute. He was flirting with her afterwards. I like that eyeshadow. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, that. Yeah, that was a cute little thing. And the last person to go through of the guys was Lazaro Arbos. He did Bridge Over by Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel. And he's so likable, but his vocal is so unpolished. I mean, I thought this would have been a great song for his voice because it's got such a nice Mm, something to it, but it just didn't, I didn't think it worked out so well. He didn't sound very good on it to me, but congratulations. He is getting better and better as he goes along. I just, I just don't know if there's time for him to catch up to everybody else pretty much. Y'all thought, y'all thought I left, didn't you? Uh-uh, I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here. I just like that so much, I had to do it again. So nice, you got to do it twice. So then we had the girls' results, and the first girl called was Janelle Arthur. She did Home by Dix Bentley, and she seemed so sweet and genuine. And she teared up while she was singing one little set of lyrics that pretty much describes her journey right now. And three judges stood for her, not Mariah. Mariah still couldn't get out of her chair. Then Candace Glover went through, and she did I'm Going Down by Mary J. Blige. All the 
the judges stood when she walked through the doors. She sang the heck out of this song. Got another standing ovation from the judges after she sang the song. You better go, girl. Congratulations. Next, they called up Angie Miller. She did I Was Here by Beyonce. <laughs> I thought it was fine, but there was a bunch of people on Twitter was like, don't you ever in your life. <laughs> and I was just laughing. Don't you ever in your life. Okay, but Keith and Randy stood for her when she came out. The other lady didn't stand. And she sang good, and I liked her sparkly pants. I really liked those sparkly pants. The judges all gave her a standing ovation after the song, and Keith was crying afterwards while he gave some comments to her. Amber Holcomb, come on down. She came out and did I'm Every Woman by Shaka Khan Whitney Houston. And Nikki's the only judge who didn't stand for her when she came out. Uh, the band seemed to overpower her a bit, but she sounded good and tried to do some of her own things with the song. And I like that. You know, and she it's such an iconic song. And it's hard not to stick pretty much to, to what the, the ladies have done with it already. But she did do a few little things to try to make it her own. And the last person going through was... Cree Harrison. I was so happy to see her. And I was when I was looking at the girls, I was like, who else is who else is left? And she was sitting in the back, so I had forgotten all about her. And when he called, I was like, oh Lord, if she wouldn't have gone through, I would have been like, I probably wouldn't at the moment I probably wouldn't even notice. But later on, I'd be like, how in the heck didn't Cree go through? So all four judges stood for her when she came through the doors. I don't know the name of the song. I'm gonna find the name of the song hopefully before I do this. But if not, somebody give me the name of the song and who did it uh, down in the comments and whatnot. So next week, they're going to have a sing-off for an extra guy and an extra girl to go on the Idol tour. So that means they're going to be adding two to make it the top 12. And I'm not sure what that means, but I guess we'll find out next week. Sing-off. How many people are going to sing? I don't know. We will find out next week. This is Robert Anton. Thanks so much for joining me. I am out. Peace. And don't forget there are more videos linked down there. So you can click down here, down here, down here somewhere. And you can find more videos from me, Robert Anton. All right. Thank you. This is Robert Anton. Thanks so much for joining you. Thanks so much. <laughs> this is Robert Anton. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, Lord.